Good afternoon. Protocol already have been established. I'm, my name is Zinzi Swan, the Youth Minister of Tourism and Transport. The need to effectively teach students how to operate motor vehicles successfully is invaluable to our community. We, the Youth Parliament of Bermuda, feel that if the, prop, if the project ride system could be improved in order for the youth to learn how to ride a motorcycle safely. Firstly, the youth must be the priority in this matter. Most children prefer to be finished project ride as soon as possible in order to guarantee they have their license before their 16th birthday. The length of the time that students spend in project ride is currently extremely short. The procedure to get your license to the procedure to get your license to complete the, is to complete an educational class that enables you to learn the rules of the road before you take your written test. This is followed by a practical lesson at which the amount of them is at the discretion of the instructor before the student takes their driving test. The, in Bermuda, the students are allowed to start Project Ride three months before their 16th birthday. This allows for the pressure to be relieved, relieved off the transportation department as students are not rushing to get their license directly before their birthday. Often, by the time that people get their licenses many months later, they are no longer familiar with the rules and procedures of the road, which is extremely dangerous. Often time in Project Ride, many people are taught just to pass the test, as the lessons com consist of completing that, the uh, exercises that you are tested on in your driving test. Children are not exposed to the different obstacles that are on the road, such as roundabouts, stoplights, and other intersections. Students also do not practice under the different conditions that can be experienced as riders on the roads, such as different types of light and weather conditions such as wind and rain. Practicing under these conditions should be an aspect of Project Ride to ensure that riders are more equipped to handle Bermuda's roads. If the course used for Project Ride are enlarged and the length of time students are supposed to spend during Project Ride is lengthened and monitored, this, world, this would also benefit not only the riders themselves, but also motorists on the road. Another fact the government needs to consider is that many people who receive their licenses after they are 18 do not have to go through Project Ride, which also makes them at risk at, for accidents on the road. Government should put in place a mature Project Ride program for older people as well in, as well in an effort to ensure that they are prepared to ride on the road. Many of the youth feel that the government should direct their attention towards a different age group because the majority of people that are dying on the roads are not the youth. However, what they fail to realize is that in around 10 years' time, that'll be us dying on the roads. However, oh, sorry. <laughs> in order to prevent us from what could happen, the skills of riding need to be taught now on the roads in Bermuda, just like how drivers are taught how to drive on the road. In conclusion, we, the Youth Parliament of Bermuda, propose for a new, bigger training course to be built with lessons taking place not only on the course, but on the road. We feel that with a bigger project riding training course the longer and, longer training, and longer training, the level of understanding that Project Ride has on the student will stay with them for a lifetime. Thank you. Protocol already being established, I am Jason A. Smith, Youth Minister of Education and Employment. In regards to the Ministry of Education and Employment, the issues that we would like to address include improvements to the public school system to better meet the needs of all students, a wider range of electives offered to give students an exposure to different subjects which will assist them in their choice of career and make more electives available to them for higher education and preparing our young people for placement tests and ensuring that they learn all that is needed to perform well once they reach higher education. Our government needs to develop a better understanding of the needs of student population because they are the future of this country and we need to offer electives that support their dreams and desires. A closer analysis of desires in the classroom, such as electives that they would prefer to be included in their syllabus, needs to be taken into consideration because they, are more, they will be more enthusiastic to participate and be involved in the electives that they are interested in. We need to develop a clear understanding of what is going on in our school system and come up with a plan to ensure the great success of Bermuda's future leaders. <coughs> we need to make sure we are offering and introducing our young Bermudian students to all the career choices that are available in Bermuda and around the world. We need to develop a system in which we can actively show them how this career might be beneficial, not only to them, but to the country that they reside in. More career fairs and more take your care to work days and more opportunities where they are presented with the, with the chance to learn all they can about what they are being offered. 
Many young Bermudian graduates have graduated hoping to continue to, prefer to pursue higher education and have been shocked to discover that they have not been taught what is needed for them to enter the courses that they have chosen. We need to develop a better and clearer system in which we prepare our young people to be given in which we prepare our young people to be able to perform well on their entrance tests, as well as teach them the basics that they need to know to be considered. Competition for students from countries all abroad is very well, and we need to do this considering offered college prep courses specifically aimed towards preparing our young people for college. We need to offer SAT courses that will introduce them to exactly what they might need in a placement test. Many Bermudians have stated that they aren't knowledgeable of what jobs are out there for them. However, if Bermudians knew all that was out there, then they would, be be they would have a better idea of how they can train themselves to become qualified to gain such a job. It is about making them aware of the different kinds of job opportunities that are out there. The more they know, the more our country will strive towards excellence and gain success. In conclusion, there are many things that can be improved throughout our government. And with these adjustments, it will only make Bermuda a better place to raise and educate your children to become productive members of society. To have your children graduate knowing that they have a chance to be something great because they were taught well and taught by a system that was designed to better help them. As Youth Minister of Education and Employment, it is my honor to have an opportunity to help develop our education system and improve the quality of education and employment in Bermuda. Many thanks, Jason A. Smith. Good afternoon. Protocol already have been established. My name is Ryan Robinson and I am the Youth Premier and Public Relations Officer for Youth Parliament. It is no secret that the Bermuda tourism industry is in trouble. Perhaps the area in Bermuda most impacted by tourism is the town of St. George. In the year 2007, a whopping 126,000 cruise ship visitors docked in St. George's. Tourists flooded the old town and businesses were thriving. Fast forward to 2011, where, excluding the Veen Dam, a mere 1,000 visitors were docked in St. George. The decline of St. George is mostly due to the fact that large cruise ships cannot enter the harbor. Obviously, this has had a devastating impact on the city's businesses, restaurateurs, and local residents. Visit St. George's today, and what you will see is a place that has been labeled a ghost town, with just few tourists scurrying around snapping pictures of what was once Bermuda's prized tourist attraction. 29 businesses have closed in St. George since 2009. Obviously, something must be done. There has been recent dialogue of widening the town cut to, a large, to allow for larger cruise ships. However, it has been met with great opposition. Organization, organizations such as BEST have cited environmental concerns while others are skeptical of the projected 40 to 70 million dollar cost. If we as Bermudians cannot come to an agreement, then we must look at other alternatives as opposed to simply doing nothing. One alternative has been put forward that in my opinion has not received the publicity that it deserves. In September of 2011, Henry Hayward, a former mayor of St. George, proposed a plan to develop Maury's Anchorage. To be located on the other side of the town, Maurice Anchorage would dispose of the need to widen town cut while serving the same purpose. Instead of two cruises in dockyard during the summer, one could visit St. George. This would also solve transportation issues that we've seen last year, where everything was in the West End. During the summer, dockyard is often overcrowded while St. George is empty. A new dock would allow a balance, helping to revitalize businesses in St. George. The only known problem to the Maurice Anchorage plan is that its construction will take away from the St. George Golf Course. However, this can certainly be resolved. With the possible ability to accommodate the largest cruise ship in the world, the proposed Maurice Anchorage plan will be expected to cost only around $30 million, half the amount of the town cut estimate, according to Henry Hayward. It is also expected to have a lighter impact on the environment. Considering all of our options, certainly the Maurice Anchorage plan is a reasonable compromise. It will have the same benefits of town cut without the high cost and environmental damage. Altering our infrastructure to allow larger cruise ships into our ports is just one task we face. Undoubtedly, more work needs to be done in our tourism industry at large. In addition to solving problems for mega cruise ship accessibility in St. George, we must also strive to compete with the world for tourists. This includes re-examining our position on gaming for cruise ships while in port. Burn News highlighted the fact that Phil Reamer 
a nationally syndicated Canadian columnist, believes that our gaming restrictions on visiting cruises may have caused an industry-wide backlash. Just last week, the Bermuda Sun reported that Norwegian cruise lines had received complaints from frustrated passengers that casinos had to shut while in Bermuda's ports. CEO Kevin Sheenan said he was keeping his fingers crossed that passengers would soon be able to enjoy gaming while in port. We have a lack of accessible ports in our country, we have a struggling old capital in the East End, and we have a lack of entertainment provided for our tourists. Bermuda is receiving international attention on these issues. We must act fast. As winners of the 2011 Expedia Top Destination Award, as a people and as Bermudians, we must do all that we can to uphold our legacy as a first-class destination. This is why we, the Youth Parliament of Bermuda, are in strong support of the Maurice Anchorage Plan, as well as cruise ship gaming while in port. Whether or not these plans come into reality, we humbly thank you for hearing all of our suggestions for making our country a better place for future generations to come. Thank you.